Hey guys, just want to clarify a couple of things before I go into this topic, because there's always somebody that can take whatever you say and twist it around into being something else. I am strongly against racism. I think racism is terrible. I experience racism in a couple of ways and discrimination in a couple of ways. One is as a username, the Japan channel, I cop racial abuse every day from stupid racists who assume I'm Japanese. So I cop a lot, a lot of racial abuse as if I was Japanese. So they use all the slanderous words that, all the insulting words that they use for, for Asian people or Japanese people. And I get hit, hit with that every day, which actually does bother me because my family is Japanese. So if you insult Japanese people, you're basically insulting my family, which is offensive and, and upsets me. So I do, know, I do know what it's like to, to be subjected to racial abuse every day every day on the internet and the other one is as a as a non-japanese person living in japan i don't i'm not subject to racism but i am subject to discrimination because i'm discriminated against quite regularly because i'm not japanese so i experience both those things on a regular basis and and as a result i know that they're really bad and that they're not good and that we should do everything we can to stop them so now having clarified that in the first minute of the video, we're gonna move on to this uh, turkey in, in the US, this guy that, for those of you who don't know the story, this guy owns a sporting team, and uh, old white guy, and had a very young, tasty girlfriend, um, who couldn't be trusted as it turned out. <laughs> and she recorded him saying some really bad racist stuff. And then we, we'd have to assume she sold the recording uh, to the media. And because, you know, she, she may have just given it to them, but hands up who thinks she sold it to the media. So sold a recording of this old white guy um, saying a whole heap of really bad racist stuff, right? So, so it's bad. And he's an old racist loser and, you know, game over for him, basically. They banned him from his sport. Uh, you know, his business associates will wipe him. And, you know, so his life is going to be a bit of a shell from now on. It's more about, this video is more about the reaction though. Um, and, and I avoided this topic. I was going to talk about this one because it's just, I don't know, you know, it's too much talking about it already. But then YouTube gave it its own heading on the front page. So there's just a big row of videos on this topic from all different people's reaction to this, right? So, so I'm going to address it. So, so a few things, just a few observations is I think, I think uh, uh, the US um, is one of the most racist, racist um, countries in the world. And I think Australia, my own country, isn't far behind it. And I think there's, you know, we could list, we could make a list, couldn't we, of the countries where the most racism happens. And I think, I think that the rhetoric and the reaction to this sort of thing shows you, like Shakespeare said, me think they doth protest too much. So it's like, you know, some old guy. Now, admittedly, he's a, he's a powerful guy and, and that probably warrants a little bit more attention because powerful dudes have the ability to mess with people's lives and decide who does what and who, can, who can't do what and who can do what. And, and so, you know, this, this dude is a powerful guy that's probably messed with people's lives. As a result, it's good that we all know if, if, if he's a racist, you know, and it's good that it's been dealt with. But it's over the top. The reaction to it is really over the top. It's just dominating American media. And uh, Obama met with the president of another country, and they had important talks about international stuff, you know. And at the end of their meeting, they came out and had a dual, a joint press conference, as they usually do. Now, it's usual uh, etiquette in that sort of circumstance to only talk to the two leaders that in the, at that pre particular press conference about the international stuff that concerns them both, right? That's the etiquette. That's the usual etiquette. When you've got two world leaders in the same press conference, the etiquette is that you talk about topics that are relevant to both of them that are international topics, right? And in the middle of that press conference, one of the media guys has stood up and said, what do you think about the old, sad old dude's racist comments? 
which is an embarrassment to the states. It really is because it's it's not the topic of the conversation. You know, it's not the topic of the of the. You know, as, as if there wasn't going to be enough chances to talk about that as it was without bringing it up in the middle of that on the international stage. It's embarrassing, you know. But I think that this sort of reaction and the overreaction, everybody's got to comment on it. And it's really funny watching the comments too and the different reactions from different races because everybody's so obsessed with race, you know. I think probably America leads on this. Australia's not far behind. Australia isn't far behind, and any comments I make about America, you can assume I'm making them about Australia as well, and other countries as well. I'm just talking about the two countries that I've seen the most examples from. But the reactions, that they're obsessed with the race thing, you know, and we've talked about this on previous videos about the, you know, um, people that call themselves African Americans that have never actually been to Africa, you know, um, and, the, and the Asian Americans and the... You know, it'd be, it'd be the same as me calling myself a Welsh, English, Irish, Australian. And if I end up with Japanese citizenship, that would mean make, make me a Welsh, Irish, uh, English, Australian, Japanese. <laughs> so, you know, the, the obsession with race. And I think in the future, I think these comments that I'm making now, a lot of people are going to what the fuck are you talking about? I think these comments or this this what I'm saying will be more relevant in a hundred years from now. I think, I think that we've got no idea about racism at the moment. It's, it's over the top. It's, it's sort of like, it's sort of like when, when, um, women's liberation first happened, it went really over the top, you know? And I think that, that that's sort of where we are with racism at the moment is that, is that the, 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 the truth is that anybody could do what that young girl did. <coughs> Because I think we all know some racist, right? There's either a racist in our family, you know, and I don't care what race you are. I don't care what race you are. I think everybody knows someone. Everyone knows someone in their family that has some sort of racial prejudice about some other race. Someone in their family or a neighbor or a friend, right? If, if, we, if we had a voice recorder, all of us would have an opportunity at some stage to catch out someone, wouldn't we? A family member or a neighbor or a friend or somebody who has some sort of some sort of racial issues and and the other thing is a lot of it's really public but the way it's working now is that it's okay for people of and we've talked about this before too it's okay for people of a particular race to talk about that particular race or it's okay <coughs> for pe people of a particular that are of a minority to talk about other minorities Russell Peters would be the example you know, Russell Peters, very funny guy, he's a Canadian guy, and he gets up and, and, and he makes jokes about every race, you know. But I think that that sort of humour um, is not going to be funny in 50 or 100 years because it's all based on stereotyping, you know, and it's going to lose its humour over 50 or 100 years. It's not going to be relevant anymore. It's not going to be true anymore, you know. And, and interestingly, too, he gets away with it because he is black, he's Indian. Or he's not Indian, he's Canadian, but his parents were Indian, right? So, so he gets away with it. But of course, if someone like me stood up on a stage or even made a video like this and started talking about all the different racial stereotypes of all the different people, um, it wouldn't, wouldn't work, would it? wouldn't get away with it. And so I've, my point is, I think that the, the, where we are with racism at the moment is really in a juvenile stage. You know, we haven't, we're not cool about it. As a, I'm talking about as societies, you know, um, the societies aren't cool. But America, America's, America's so hypocritical about this stuff, you know, it makes such a big fuss when someone gets caught making comments like that. And yet you've still got the KKK there having meetings and standing up and talking about it. So it's not a secret that the, the country's got a lot of racists in it. And Australia's the same. It's not a secret. You know, and, and yet when you get some high profile person that gets caught out saying something like that, Australia's the same. Some high profile person gets caught out saying something racist, it's all over the media and it's a really big deal. I mean, really, <coughs> it's going to, it, it's, the reaction to it says a lot about how naive we are about it. Because we all know there's racists all around us. It should be more like, when, when, you, when they get caught out like that, it should be like, ah, he's one. It's like they've come out of the closet, right? They're, 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 you know, we didn't, well, apparently a lot of people did know that guy was racist, but, but she's caught him out. 
and she's you know she's she's secretly taped him and then put the tape out and shown everybody that shouldn't have been on the world stage all that it shouldn't have been that big a deal it should have been like oh he's caught <coughs> and then he got banned from his sport and that's appropriate too but it, you know, does it really need to go on and on and on and every every day it seems to be a different news programs doing another story on it and talking about it and reaction let's get a reaction hey there's a black guy on our panel let's get a reaction from him that's really common the white guys all sit there quietly and the black guy on the news panel has a big talk about what he thinks about it or i've noticed a lot of these a lot of sporting shows where you know the black guys on the sporting show will sit there and talk about their reaction to it and the white guys all sit there quietly and agree with them and say, yeah, yeah, <laughs> the end, which in itself shows a sort of a juvenile attitude towards the racist thing. You know, it's like, it's like if you're a minority, you're allowed to talk about racism. If you're a white person, you're not, or you've got to be really treading lightly, or you've got to be really careful what you say. So the white guys sort of sit there quietly just agreeing. And the black guys are having big long rants about, you know, how catching out this guy with his racism and that sort of stuff, as if it's a really, like it's some sort of breakthrough that nobody knew about, you know? He's just another one. Put him on the list. Put him on the list of, one, of known racists, you know? Ban him from his sport and move on. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> I think if there's a lesson in this, the lesson is that if, if you're an old dude or if you're a famous dude and you've got some young, tasty girl who's sleeping with you for money. <laughs> I shouldn't say that, but it's pretty obvious, isn't it? You know, she's like, I don't know, 20 something, and what's he, like 110 or something, and, and you know, and, and her first opportunity, she, she's sure to have sold that recording. You know, the guy should have learnt from Tiger Woods. Remember when Tiger Woods got caught and his wife found out he'd been fooling around with someone and, and there was a big drama and he crashed his car into a tree or something? And then it became all public. It became all public that he'd been caught fooling around with some girl. And then all of a sudden, they're all popping up all over the place. All these strippers and hookers and all these different girls all popping up all over the place. He did me too. He did me too. You know, really, uh, you know, classy. <laughs> yeah, I had sex with him for money. Oh, God. But, um, but selling out to the media, of course, selling their stories to the media to talk about how they fooled around with Tiger Woods, you know. So the lesson is if you're a famous dude and you got some girl sleeping with you who's money hungry, be really careful not to trust her. <laughs> but yeah, the race, I don't know, the racist thing, it's, a, it's just, it, to me, it's, it's all sense smacks of hip, hypocrisy. And you just know, when you're watching these, these people talking about it, you just know that statistically we know in amongst those people that are, that are saying, yeah, he's really bad for talking, being a racist. Statistically, we know that, that there's a percentage of those people who are criticizing him who are the same. It's the same as when Tiger Woods did get caught fooling around on the side. There's a percentage of people who all talked about that, how, how naughty he was and all that sort of stuff, who are doing the same thing, who are fooling around on the side with secret girlfriends and things. And the racism is the same. You just know it. When you're, when you're looking at all those people on the front page of YouTube at the moment from all over the different media organisations, predominantly American, but all over these media organisations all talking about how bad this, this, you know, this, this racist old dude is, and you just know that there's a percentage of those who, when they're sitting around their dining room table at home, are saying racist shit themselves. And I'm talking about not just about white people, I'm talking about everybody. You know, because I know racist Japanese people and I know racist white people and I know racist black people and there's racists in every, of every colour, right? As you guys well know. So there's just something about this. It's just something about this. It's the Shakespeare, me think, that doth protest much. It's the, it's the, it's the Christian thing with the throat, who casts the first stone. You know, it's, it's the same. To, it's, to me, it feels the same as when as when a celebrity gets caught fooling around on the side or a celebrity gets caught taking cocaine and everybody goes, oh, that's really bad. He shouldn't have done that. <laughs> he, oh, it's terrible he did that, you know? <laughs> you just know there's a percentage of them that do it too. And that, that guy got caught, so let's all talk about him. You know, and everybody, yeah, yeah, yeah. And some of these rants, you know, I know this is a rant, but some of the rants on TV, I mean, this is YouTube. It's not costing anybody anything, right? But some of those rants on, on, on TV, 
You know, they'll, they'll let these guys sit and talk for 10 minutes about how bad the cracker was. You know, the black guy sitting there talking about how bad this was and the white guys all sitting there going, hmm, hmm, yes indeed. You know? And, and big, long, righteous, self-righteous, and it's like, yeah, right, okay. The more they talk, the more they go on about it, the more it seems that, why? Why? What is this news to you that there's some there's some old racists around? You know, I, I think it's, it, my feeling is it's getting less. That over the next hundred years it's going to get less and less, and that hopefully racism should get weaker and weaker. You know, that's my feeling on it. And just I know myself from people in my life. I know great my grandparents' generation. <coughs> they, they didn't realise they were racist, but they'd say things. You know, they'd say things that when I remember them now, I was like, geez, that was terrible. You know, they, they used to say, my, my grandmother's generation in Australia used to, if a place was a mess, they'd say, this place is a gins camp, which is a terrible thing to say. It's saying that the place is an Aboriginals camp because Aboriginals camps were known to be <laughs> untidy. But, but that, was the, that, was the, that was what they'd say. And there's a lot of those. My, my family and I talked about this one day, trying to remember all these from my grandmother's generation, and there was lots of them. There was lots of them, you know? And then, you know, as, as the generations have come down, there's been less and less of that, more awareness of what those sorts of things mean. But you guys know it's still rife in our societies. And not saying that if, if it comes up that we shouldn't jump on it, we should. And, and, and that's what happened. That guy got caught out, and then he should be banned from his sport and, he, and, he, and people should stop doing business with him and, you know, he should be pushed off into the corner and pay the price for, for you know, for having those attitudes. That's, that's fair enough. But there's just something about this reaction. See, see what I mean? Have a look. Next time you hear someone ranting about this on TV, about what, how bad he was and all this sort of stuff, well, yeah, we know that. Racism sucks and racists suck. Right? That's it. That's it, isn't it? Does it really need 10 minutes of saying how bad he is? And that's what I'm talking about. Is someone talking for 10 minutes about how bad that guy is? And, and how we should punish people like that? Well, does it take that much? The bottom line is racism sucks. Racists suck. And, and we should poke them in the eye if we catch them. Leave it at that. And we shouldn't tolerate it. That's the other thing. So if we do have someone, Uncle Bert, at our family barbecue going on with his racist shit, we should tell him to pull his head in. Tell him he's full of shit. Or our next door neighbour, whoever it is that's going on with their racist stuff. But there's no need for a 10 minute rant. You know, just a quick, hey, that's not cool. That's enough, isn't it? So just, just next time you hear someone going on and on and on about that thing, about that guy, just think about listen to it and, and see if you notice what I'm noticing with this. Have a look at the front page of YouTube. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. You know what? The headline should be, um, old white guy has racist attitude. That's what it is. That's what it is. It just happens to be that guy's got a lot of money and a high profile, but he's not the only one, you know, there'd be the same percentage of rich, powerful people are racist as our normal people are racist, right? Joe Public is racist. It's the same percentage. There's no surprise there. So and yet everyone's so surprised by it. It's just no, no. It's, it's the same. It's the same as the guy gets caught out with a girlfriend, or you know, you watch who gets so emotional when someone gets caught out with a girlfriend. Look at all the religious fanatics that go on about faithfulness and not fooling around on the side, and not not having sex with people you're not married to and stuff. And then they get caught with their secret girlfriend or something like that. And how often has that happened? And then you see them on TV going, oh, no, I sinned. Yeah, it happens all the time, doesn't it? Politicians. Politician gets caught fooling around on the side and all the other politicians go, oh, that's very naughty. And then <coughs> later, <coughs> later on, the same politicians get caught doing the same thing. It's the hypocrisy I'm talking about. You can smell the hypocrisy when you listen to these people. When you listen to people going on about how that guy got caught fooling around, or you listen to the people going on about the guy got caught taking cocaine, or smoking pot, or whatever, and you know that that it's the same as with this. I can smell hypocrisy from these people when they're all sitting there going on and on and on about the racist, you know. And it's like, no, you, you, you're talking too much about it. 
You know, you go, you, you're hating on it too much. You, you, what is this? What's going on with that? You know, you can smell the hypocrisy. You just know. Not all of them, of course. You know, some people are genuinely upset by it and, and want to express their thoughts. That's fair enough. And maybe the director or whoever it is has given them 10 minutes to talk about it. So that's fair enough too. But, but just, just, you know, when you're watching this stuff or reading this stuff in the press or whatever, just, just keep this in mind and see if you can smell a rat too, if you can smell some hypocrisy happening. And, and the person who's talking, why, what, what? You know, does that person go home at night, whatever colour they are, go home at night and have their own racist attitudes about different things? Because I, I think we're just, we're just really juvenile with this. I think America and Australia, and I've, I've, I've had a lot of experiences with it from England as well. And, you know, I think, I think we're still in a real juvenile phase. And I think 100 years from now, we'll look back at this time and go, oh, man, we had no idea. We had comedians on TV talking about all these words, using all these words that other people aren't allowed to use because the black people are allowed to use that word. But, the, the, you know, I'm allowed to say cracker but I'm not allowed to say the black equivalent, right? And all those strange rules like that, that, you know, in a hundred years from now, we look back, oh, how is that? You know, that guy's allowed to say that word, but that guy's not, you know? But where were we back then? You know, in the early 21st century, we had no idea, you know? And all this African-American, Asian-American and stuff like that, that that's gonna look ridiculous in a hundred years from now. You know, people have never been to Africa calling themselves African-Americans. African, African is a race, right? And it's also a nationality, but it's being used as a race. But American isn't a race. American is a nationality, right? There's no such thing as an American race. American is a nationality. So they're actually using an American, American as a nationality, but African as a, as a, as a racial thing. So racial nationality, Asian nationality which is a strange thing. It's predominantly American. Other countries don't do it. I've never heard someone call, them, call themselves an Asian Australian. Probably some do now, having been exposed to enough American media, but you know, it's really predominantly an American thing where they're obsessed with the race. 100 years from now, you can be guaranteed people will be Americans and Australians and England and English, and they won't be, they won't be, you know, they won't, be, won't call themselves by their race because it won't be relevant hundred years from now, hopefully. Hopefully a hundred years from now we've evolved enough, you know. We shall see, we shall see. I mean, it's really only been the last few hundred years that we've all started to get mixed together like this. So we'll see what happens over the next hundred. Well, well I won't. <laughs> Society will. Anyway, interested to hear your thoughts. As always, different opinions welcome. Rudeness is deleted and rude assholes are blocked but different opinions are definitely welcome. More videos coming soon.